In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a sandbar pillow just like you see. This is very similar to something that we've done already and I'm gonna show you a little bit about that because I wondered what it would look like as a full size pillow or like a full pillow and this is a 12 inch uh, pillow form that's on the inside and you can see it's double sided. So back a few weeks ago I showed you how to make this pillow face that you see and you can see that I applied it to a pillow knot <laughs> um, but I actually have the other one that I got to finish. So this is what the pillow looks like and I have never seen this kind of stitch work before. Well I may have seen it but I've never really paid attention to it until I did it on this particular one and here it is. So what I decided to do is take this piece from this uh, pillow and apply it to this pillow just like you see as a one piece unit. I just thought it looks so amazing why not make the whole thing that. So that's why I've, why I've come up with the idea to put things together. So here's what the pillow face looks like before you start doing your bordering to go around. I want you to take a look at this. I'm gonna leave a larger copy of this on our website so that you can study it if you would like to. But you can really pay attention to the number of spaces that you see. So you see that there's a gray. So there's gray. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you're gonna do two of them and use that as your marking point. So when we do the first one this is like a half and the other last one is like a half. So then you can see that. So the cream color that you see here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and you can match those. So what we have here is that we have it going all the way across, and we're gonna just chain 39 to begin, and 39 is your magic number for this particular one that we're about to do. So that it's kind of gonna keep everything in balance, and we're gonna be carrying up the yarn on the one side so that we don't have to have all these loose ends. So you'll notice that we're, that we're doing that, and when we do the final border, we're gonna cover that over top with the border, uh, and so therefore you don't have to worry about so many loose ends at the end. If you would like to change the size of this particular pillow, what you can do is do it in multiples of eight plus seven. So you go eight, 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 when you're happy, add another seven and therefore the pattern will stay in balance. So when we go to do this, when we look at it from this perspective, is that we have multiples of eight, and so that's, that will take you 32. So there be the 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39 is that to get you to that number. So it's multiples of eight plus seven. So as we begin to do this pattern you're going to notice that we're gonna have one extra stitch on either side as we going to do it and we're going to be carrying up the yarn as I promised on the one side. I'm not sure what side it is because it's that well buried. You'll need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and I just decided to use Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn just like you see. So we have the color of clay and cream and you just need one ball of each in order to complete. Um, this one here because of the slip stitching takes a little bit longer than the rest of the collection we have in this one but the results are amazing. You can't deny it. So let's without further ado let's get started. So let's begin with the slip knot. So you're gonna chain a total of 39. You can also do your multiples of eight plus seven which I will do a smaller version of. So you're just gonna chain the number that you want. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's one multiple there and I'm gonna do another one. So one, two, uh, two three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you can either chain to all the way to 39 and if you wanna do it the way I'm doing it then I once I'm happy with the length of it I can just add another seven to keep balance. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven only. So without further ado we're gonna then move on to row number one and start uh, working out this pattern together. To begin you're gonna go second chain from the hook and you're going to slip stitch the first five in a row. So I told you that the outside edges have an extra stitch. So on the, on the outside they're always be in groups of five and anywhere else it's gonna be one. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the second chain over. So and you're gonna do that one plus four more. So just keep moving along. So this is two, this is three, four, and five. Once you have the first five slip, slip stitches in I want you to half double crochet the next four only. So everything is now in groups of four until you get to the other side. So there's gonna be four half double crochets in a row. and then once those four are done you're gonna go back to slip stitching and it will be the next four in a row. So you're gonna do them in groups of fours going all the way into the end and please do that and I will see at the end of this chain where we'll just finish off and make sure you're doing it right. So doing four of either slip stitching or half double crochet all the way across. 
So once you get all the way across I'm doing the final five. So there's gonna be five stitches left or five chains left at the end and just to make a mental note is that the last five are the same stitch that you started with. So in order to keep this pattern consistent I had you chain in multiples of either eight plus seven or you can do the thirty nine and the ends will always look the same. So you will have slip stitching on the one side and slip on the other with the bulging in the middle. So what I want you to do is that we are going to then just if you wanna change color this is where you're gonna do it. If you wanna keep it all the same color you can if you want to. But if you wanna change color on the last one I just pulled out when I insert in I am going to just leave that gray aside and pull up my cream color to start the next one. So we're only doing the gray color just for the one row and then we start the other rows after that. So we're just gonna create a slip knot and pull it through and now for the next two rows it's only gonna be the cream and you're just gonna turn. So what we need to do then to create the ridge look we have to stay on the back loop only. So for the next four in a row is that we are just gonna go in the back loop. So just get the back loop. So if you go into both of the uh, strands it's a stitch. If you go into the first stand closest to you it is a front loop and the furthest one is a back loop. And you're just gonna do four half double crochets in the back loop only. This is what creates those ridges that you see. So with the chaining of two that you started with plus these four it gives you a total of five. Now for the next four in a row they're each slip stitching in the back loop. So everything now for the entire duration until we get to the border of your faces are always gonna be in the back loops. So there's gonna be four in a row of slip stitching. And then you switch back then four in a row to half doubles and you keep doing that all the way across. So I told you before see how the gray is smaller. So the very last part here when you get there will be um, the cream color but in the half double crochet format in order to stay in balance. And it's just a matter of just following the pattern. I'm not having to think about anything else other than that. So it's nothing special. It's just a matter of just keeping the counts of fours, fours, and fours. And then the last five are going to be the same stitch or whatever it's calling for. In this case it'll be half double crochet. So do that all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of the row in just a moment. So as we get to the other side there is five half double crochets to finish. Sometimes the fifth one is hard to see so just jam it in there. Just be consistent of where you're sticking your hook and then the world should be all good. Sometimes you gotta fake it. So I told you that things are working in sets of two, uh, two rows. So this is the first half of a, of a cream color. So when you turn you're going to create the same stitch work you just came out of. So you're just gonna chain two and stay on the back loop only starting in the next one and you are going to apply your half double crochets then for the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next four in a row are each single crochets. Or sorry slip stitching I apologize for that. So it's just gonna be a slip stitch. So do you see that the cream color is the exact same stitches on top of each other of what they are and that creates the, the, the sandbar look of the, of the entire pillow. And if you turn it around see how it looks different on the one side versus the other. So the one side here do you see how it's kind of overlapping the gray? That means that this is the back of it and see how it's clean cut on this other side. That means that that's the front of the pillow. So just keep alternating between the groups of four. So it's either four slip stitch or four half double crochets. And at the very end of the row we're going to switch back to gray. So you, do go, you just go down one, one way come back with the same color and then just grab the other color and go down and back. And that's pretty much the duration of your entire pillow face. Now would I do a full afghan with this? I'm really not so sure. So watch the very end. So I have four done. See it's still missing one. It looks like it, it doesn't need to be in there but it does. And then what you have to do is your very last stitch because we're about to switch back to the gray is let the cream come, come down and just put the, the gray to finish that. And the gray should just be taut. So it should not be too, too tight. And then you're gonna start the gray. To start the gray 
immediately whenever you're doing gray you're just gonna um, slip stitch the first one. So slip and then do the next four of slip stitching keeping it on the back loop only. So that was three, four and five. Okay because there's five in the beginning and then the next four in a row are each one half double crochet. Do you see what I'm see what I'm saying? If you're can you see how the pattern is gonna work its way out? And then the next four are slip stitch. If I'm saying single crochet, I shouldn't be. It's slip stitching. I'm starting to doubt myself now. <laughs> and so you're looking at the good side of the project at the moment as you're doing it. So you can tell what side is the good side and what side's the bad side as you're working your way across. And then because it is the gray, the last five stitches will each be on the slip stitch. And then when you, it's easier when you get to the end, especially if it's a slip stitch, we're gonna start the next row. So just going into the back loop only before you turn it and then just pull through and through and that's your first one. So this will be number two, three, four and five and then switch to half double crochet. So see how it's half on uh, below? You wanna keep that being the same. So essentially the two rows of the same color work together and then you switch back to the single. So when you look at it from this perspective you can see how it's working out and that's what you can get with your pillow face when you're doing that. So let me take you back to the picture and then we're gonna show you how to do the border next. So as I said this picture will be available on our website if you wanna study it and just make sure that you have your count. So we started off with our gray and then, and then we came across and then we're going back and forth with the cream and then when I last left you we went across with the gray and then we were coming back and we stopped. So you wanna just keep on going back and forth. You can see that the one side here this is where it's carrying up and if you look at the good project here that we're just um, doing now see how the yarn is carrying up on the one side so it matches exactly what you see in the photograph. So the yarn will be carrying up on the one side and if you turn it over you'll see that the back side is not as pretty when you look at it from that perspective. So you wanna keep on going until it's um, you have these many rows. So it's gonna be half a gray. So just count the number of gray spots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. The last one is half a row only as well. So make sure you see that and then the cream color is then and I would use that as your your kind of like a visual aid is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And once you have that ready to go we're gonna do two rounds for the border. You're gonna do that for both of them and then we're gonna put it together to sandwich it for your pillow. So let's move along then to getting to the top to do the border. So just keep on going and just put me on hold now and I will see you there when you're ready. So once you get to the height that you need and I put a photo of this on our website so you can actually stare at that photo and count the number of spaces that you have. So what I would recommend to you is probably do both of the faces like I did before applying to a border that is your final before putting the pillow face on. So to quickly review what you will have is one gray and then you'll have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. And so you'll see that the bottom here is only one row and the last one is only one row to keep it the balance. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So with the cream color then how many do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and those are full of two rows that make those up. So once you get that done then you're ready to go. And you will notice that your stitch work has all been dragged up on the outside here which will bury because when we look at the other sample here of one that's already done you can see as I did the border it gets trapped into position and you'll never see it. So our goal now is to transition the panel to having a border which is two rounds. So as you got up here you would have left your white behind so then you're just gonna take a tapestry needle and then hide that into position just get rid of it and then we're gonna continue on with the gray. So we've just finished coming across and we're looking at the good side of the project. You can tell because the other side of the project looks like that. It looks very different. So we're gonna start off in our very first um, pass around. So what we're going to do is just evenly space your single crochet down the sides and then just do each one of the stitches when you hear. Now the trick is is that when you turn the corners which I'm about to do I already have one in there because I came across and you were going to uh, single crochet. So to start up another row you're gonna chain up one 
and you're gonna single crochet three times in the first one. So one, two, and three. And then continue along coming all the way down. So when you do it, don't go into like a massive space. Go into just chain work to keep it evenly looking. Now if you are that particular, what you can do is just do one and do it to the best of your ability and then what you can do is then take the second one after you've done it and you can count the number of stitches you did in order to keep it in line. Again when you're whip stitching stuff or a single crocheting you can always fake things. So um, if you're off by a few stitches it, pretty much you can hide it um, through your single crochet. So just um, single crochet yourself all the way around just evenly space your single crochets on the sides and then remember when you turn corners it's always three singles in the corner. So as I'm coming around what I'm doing now is that I'm coming to the side that has these carry strings. So what I want to do is that I wanna favor this side as being the outside because it looks great and the other side you can tell is the inside. So when I start working up then the side I want to trap that carrying strings underneath so that they just pull underneath of the border. Okay, so when I'm working across, so you see I'm going up over top of that gray and I'm working my way across but eventually you'll have the other colors that you see. So gray is the dominant one really because it uh, had to go over a larger space. So you'll no notice when we did the gray it was always smaller in the, in the corners. So you want to just trap those strands underneath the stitch work as you go. Still equally spacing things. So there's another one here. So just pick up, go up underneath it to get it to go underneath into the border. So continue to do that all the way around. So you only have to worry about this on the one side and then as you get up to the top then just gotta turn the corner so three single crochet and then continue along the top just with one single crochet in each of the stitches. So that is still the first round of putting your border on your pillow face. When you get all the way back around remember that we put the three single crochets in right away on the corner. So just slip stitch it to the first stitch of the three to, to finish that um, corner. So now to begin the next one what we have to do is slip stitch to the next one which is the middle corner again. Chain one and three single crochets in that one. Now that we have gone all the way around once all the stitch work is already in so it's just a matter of just turning on the TV and enjoying the rest of it. So what you wanna do is just single crochet in each and then the middle one of the grouping of three you're going to apply to a three apply three to, uh, single crochets. You're gonna do that all the way around for that and then you're done. So you wanna do both of your pillow faces like this and use, once you get one done, use that as your model for the second one just in case um, something's going wrong. I don't know what could go wrong but you never know. And uh, continue that and then I'm gonna meet you at the end of this round and we're gonna then put our, put our pillow face together with the, uh, together to put the pillow inside. When you get all the way back around then you're just going to just slip stitch to the first one of the three that you put in there and then that's it. So just for variance what I'm going to do is just fasten this off and I'm going to use the cream color then as the final to insert the pillow into the form as I go. So I'm one of those kind of people that I really do like my pillows to be permanently inside. Um, just a personal preference. You, Of course you can decide what works for you and what doesn't. So once you get those pillow faces done you're gonna have two and then when you put them together you're going to just turn them over so you got the wrong side facing up and then this one and then the good side facing up in this one. So when you flip it you should see the good side on both sides. So there's no point putting the pillow in there yet because there's nowhere to put it in. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna grab the cream color and then I'm gonna join it and then I'm gonna match. Now if you had a guess or something's wrong you can always fake it as you go and we'll cover that quickly. So let's begin. As a personal preference I don't like to necessarily start on a corner when it comes to these pillows because that's where people look first. So I'm just gonna come about an inch in and I'm just going to match. So you have the three single crochets here and then you have the three on this side and I'm just going to match the stitches together. And so I'm gonna go in here and here. And I'm just going to yarn over and pull it through. And this is a standing single crochet that I'm doing. So I've just looped it through and then I'm gonna pull through two and that's a standing single crochet. Leaving the straggler down in position so it gets stuck underneath is that you're just gonna go in the one side and then to the right through to the other side. So you're capturing both of these panels at the same time. So in 
and then you can leave that straggler on the inside now. And I'm gonna show you a way to fasten this off at the end so that you have pretty much a good edge that people will look at. So you're just gonna continue to, to kind of match as you go. And what I'm recommending for the outside of this one here you need to put in your three single crochets right in the corner to get it to turn properly and then continue along. So just start keep matching as you're going. The trick is to keep those stragglers on the inside of the work. So once I get three sides complete I'm then going to grab my pillow form and I'm gonna insert it in and then seal it in with the final coming across. So let's do that now and I'll see you once I get three sides complete. So what happens if you're running out of stitches or something's not lining properly? It's really easy to fake stuff like this. So what you could do, say you wanted um, this front one had too many stitches, you can just put two together. So you could actually just go in and single crochet and then what you can just do is then grab the next one and then go back into the same one that you were in the back side. So you can kind of put two, see they're both using the same stitch in the back just as kind of a neat way. This would be considered the front face as well. So you wanna favor that for any uh, alterations that you wanna do. So you can do that and it's kind of neat. Um, if things are really off you could always whip stitch things together as well and that's a great way to hide any imperfections as well. So let's continue. I'll see it at the end once I have three sides complete. So now that I have three sides complete I'm going to insert my pillow. So what I want to do is that I want to make sure I take off any labels and tags and stuff on the pillow and I want to insert right in. You want to make sure the pillow is flat and texture and just sitting in properly so you can see it's gonna have a really nice shape to it. And now what I want to do is that I have to crochet the remaining of it shut. So just continuing along and just kind of pinching things together in order to get things to go. So let me do that and then I'm gonna show you how to weave off your ends in case you don't haven't seen that before and uh, make sure that your outside uh, strands left over will be well hidden. So I'm just gonna put this on my lap and finish off. So now that I've come all the way around I'm not slip stitching to the first one. Normally you would. So what I want to do is just cut that yarn and don't flip out yet so I'm just gonna pull that strand up. I'm going to grab a tapestry needle and I'm going to do what is called as an invisible join where it looks like it's the actual stitch. So taking that tapestry needle just drag it through the top of the stitch just straight across and pull tight and right where that one is coming out of that's where you wanna dive back into the middle and pull it and it almost makes it look perfect. Pretty close, right? So then what you're gonna do, turn it to the other side, to the back side and just dragging the loose ends up underneath the stitches on the inside. Don't you dare go on the outside because you've just done all this beautiful work on the outside. So just on the, stay underneath. So one, once, go back second time and third time is a charm. So third time is the ultimate best. Your project can never stretch three different directions at one time. Therefore this should never ever fall out on you. And pull it nice and tight. Just like that. So now your pillow is complete. Just have to kind of just shape that foaming or the fluff on the inside and this pillow is good to go. And this is the sandbar pillow and this is a really neat and fun idea. Till next time have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye. <music>